is Haley from mononeurobits.com and today I'm going to be doing a video all about spaying and neutering your rabbit. So spaying and neutering is critical for your rabbit's overall health and well-being. However, there is a lot of information on why you should spay and neuter your rabbit, so I'm not going to get into that in this video. If you guys want to see a video about that, maybe I will do one in the future. Uh, but for this video, this is just kind of about like the whole procedure, like before you go get your rabbit fixed, after you get him fixed, uh, and stuff like that. So the first thing you want to do is find a rabbit savvy vet. Pretty much what this means is a vet that is comfortable with rabbits and has been trained in exotic animals. When vets go to vet school or whatever, most times they're mostly researching just cats and dogs. That's normally what most vets are trained in. But exotic vets specialize in exotic species such as rabbits, guinea pigs, other rodents, birds, and reptiles and stuff like that. I'll leave a link in the description um, to a website by the House Rabbit Society that just kind of gives you information on how to find a rabbit savvy vet. But a couple tips is to make sure that they provide pain medicine after your rabbit's procedure. This is extremely important. So please, please, please make sure that your rabbit provides a pain medication after the surgery as this will help so much with your rabbit's recovery. Another good thing is to ask about their success rate. Make sure that when they are doing procedures with rabbits, their success rate is rather high. Obviously, some rabbits have passed away from, you know, surgeries or procedures, so don't be too alarmed if they have had rabbits pass away, um, but the number should be very, very low. After you have found a rabbit savvy vet and booked your appointment, you are gonna wanna prepare for your rabbit's procedure. Ask your vet if your rabbit will have to spend the night. This depends on different vets and what they're comfortable with. Some will let the rabbits go home the same day. Some let them or make you have them spend the night. It really just depends. If they're gonna spend the night, make sure to bring all their pellets, veggies, hay, and um, sometimes you might wanna bring some of your own water from home just so that it's a familiar taste. If your rabbit will not be spending the night, most likely it will be there after the procedure for a couple of hours. Uh, so make sure you do bring their hay and maybe some pellets anyways, just to have some food around so that they can um, eat if they're hungry. You are also gonna wanna bring a carrier with extra towels and maybe some puppy pads depending on your preference. I find this super helpful to lay a puppy pad on the bottom with a towel on top in case they pee and then bring an extra set um, in case you want it soiled and you want to replace it. You're going to want to prepare your rabbit's cage before you leave for the vet so that it is nice and ready when they come home. Some things you'll want to do is to remove any second levels or things your rabbit could jump on. This could cause your rabbit's stitches to split open and maybe cause bleeding. Uh, you want to really restrain your rabbit's activity levels during their recovery time. So you don't want them jumping or running around too much, which is why you want to remove any second levels or anything else like that. Another good tip is to cut your litter box down, especially if it has a taller edge on it anyways. So you may want to just buy a litter box with a shorter edge or use the bottom of your rabbit's carrier as a litter box. Otherwise, you can cut a litter box yourself, although from experience, this is very difficult <laughs> as the plastic is very thick, so you'll want some really heavy duty, some sort of like scissors or um, some building thing that is very sharp. You'll also wanna make sure the cage is nice and clean and cozy, full of fresh hay and other yummy things for them to eat. You will want the cage very clean so that, you know, the rabbit doesn't get any infections where their incision is. You will also want it to be cozy as your rabbit's gonna be sleeping a lot. So add a lot of fleece or nice blankets for them to snuggle up in. You can add a bed if your rabbit likes that kind of thing. You'll also want to provide a lot of uh, different types of food, especially your rabbit's favorite food. After a rabbit comes out of surgery, they don't like to eat a whole lot just because they're in pain, uh, but you really want to push the food a lot as you do need your rabbit to eat, as if rabbits do not eat, they can go into GI stasis, and I'll have that video linked on the screen and in the description below if you're not sure what GI stasis is. So after your rabbit's procedure, you're gonna wanna make sure they are eating and drinking, like I said, 
Um, pain medication really, really helps with this. If you can't get your rabbit to eat and you are worried about it, please call your rabbit veterinarian and ask what you should do. Um, most likely they will have some sort of um, syringe food that you can give them um, and stuff like that. Also be sure to give your medication on time um, whenever your rabbit vet has told you to give it. A lot of times it's like twice a day or something like that, uh, but just be sure that you are giving that regularly. You'll also want to be checking their incision. Make sure it's not red or inflamed and make sure they're not ripping their stitches open. Um, pretty much you can just lift your rabbit up gently or hold the treat up so that they kind of like stretch up a little bit and you can see their stomach as they will probably shave your rabbit's stomach when they uh, have the procedure done. So you'll be able to see it. Make sure that it's not really red and inflamed looking. Make sure there's no like, you know, yellow or green pus coming out of it. Uh, you can also ask your vet what to look for. You will know if your rabbit has ripped their stitches out as there will be blood um, either coming from the incision or on the floor of your rabbit's cage. If you see any blood or you think your rabbit has ripped its stitches open, please take your rabbit back to the vet as soon as possible as they do need to restitch that closed um, and take care of them. Some vets make the rabbits wear a cone after surgery. I personally don't find this necessary for all rabbits. My vet said if your rabbit starts, you know, picking at the incision or like really messing with it, then I could go in and get a cone. Um, but you know, cones are very difficult with rabbits, which is why she doesn't regularly um, give them. Um, but there are some rabbits who definitely probably should have a cone as they may rip their stitches open or they're just, you know, really rambunctious or something. You'll also want to leave your rabbit in their cage and restrict playtime until your rabbit has healed. This is just so that they aren't running around binking or jumping on things and um, bothering the incision. You'll probably want to do um, restricted playtime and stuff for a week or two, uh, really depending on the rabbit. Male rabbits will probably bounce back quicker than females as it isn't as an in-depth procedure. So a male might feel great in like a week or even less, but a female may take a little bit longer. And lastly, always follow your vet's instructions and call them with any concerns you may have. I am not a rabbit veterinarian, I'm just simply giving you tips on things I have learned over the years of owning rabbits, so please always call your rabbit veterinarian if you have any questions or concerns. So if you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below. But of course, if it's anything serious, please ask your rabbit veterinarian. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to see more videos on rabbits and rabbit care. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all soon on a new video. Bye!